Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on this big watercolor painting. I am so excited to finally work on something like this. It's been a very long time since I've put this much effort and time and attention into a watercolor painting like this. So it feels really good to just give that that attention to something that I I enjoy doing. So so yeah, this this painting is actually available as a print. I'll say that right off the bat. If you if you want, she's actually available in two different sizes. So there's eight by ten, and there's also the original size, which is an eleven by seventeen, and that's over at my shop. So you can check that out. There's a link in the description. I am actually very happy with how this one turned out. I I will talk more about, about why that is and and what what it means for me moving forward. Hopefully it means something a little bit more significant, but, but I also want to talk about the process that went into this piece because there was a lot of things that I was experimenting with and that were new and exciting, but, but yeah, we're, we're painting a unicorn and a girl and, and I, that alone, like it feels like I'm on the right track. Like I'm starting to figure out really what kind of feeling I do want in my paintings. I, it's been a, a struggle. I always say that because I've been struggling with it for a long time, but it's been a struggle with really figuring out like what I want to draw and what drives me and it's an artist. But this piece really does make me feel like I'm starting to figure it out, which is very encouraging. Also the colors, I, I think that I've just, I overthink them a lot, which which thinking through the colors, like that's a really important step when it comes to working on a, a painting because it can completely change the atmosphere and the meaning behind it. So I, I love putting a lot of thought into really figuring out the colors, but I think that I've been maybe overthinking trying to be different enough from other pieces or from, from what my own tastes are. So for this one I did multiple versions of color comps as I worked through the process, but but I, I had this kind of epiphany where I realized I was I was not really like focusing on colors that I specifically loved and that I thought would fit the mood that I wanted for this piece. So then I decided to do one that just had colors that, that I was really excited about. So I had this like lavender hair color that leaned a little bit on the side of of this pink color and then I gave the background this minty green color so that there's just this like hint of a complementary contrast between the character and the area behind her and that immediately made me just completely excited about this piece. I was really excited about the sketch but I wasn't hooked until I got the colors for this one and then it felt very much like something that I would want to look at and therefore something that I want to paint. So, so that was a step forward, just unlocking that little moment where I realized that, that I can focus on colors that are my favorite and color combinations that are my favorite. And I mean, that, that happens. There's plenty of pieces that I do that are specifically about the colors that I love, but, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, it was good. It was a good moment for me. So now that I've talked and talked about that with her, with her skin, I really loved painting it. There are a few things that I, I would change if I could magically. Sometimes I have that thought, I'm like, if this was digital, I would do this exact thing. Uh, so for, for the, for the example on her blush on her face, I got a little bit carried away with the shape of where the blush was. So it ended up being a little bit more of like this bar across her face where really I would have liked it to have been a little bit lower on her cheeks and then come back up and then cover her nose a little bit. Kind of like what's happening now, only just a, a little bit more tailored and trimmed down. And eventually I actually, once I finish all of the watercolor painting on this one, I pull out my my pastels. I think they're just called pastels. It didn't sound quite right. But I pulled that out and I just created this really light, soft mask, I guess, over some of the the blushier red colors that I, I wanted to have a little bit less prevalent. That way I had more of the shape that I wanted. And that actually helped a lot. And, and it's really nice to be able to have those things. I, I've done something like that similarly in the past and to know that that's something that I can rely on to, to edit and work through the piece a little bit more so that some problems like that I can fix because I have made those mistakes in the past and I have figured them out in the past. 
Okay, but the I think the biggest thing that they're really going into this that was different, different from what I usually do, is that I didn't have any line work at all going into it. <laughs> I was really nervous, actually, when I was transferring this over and when I'd made the decision to make it so big. And I didn't have any more cold press paper. I only had hot press paper. And I love hot press paper, and maybe it's actually my favorite type of paper, but it is something that is a little bit more of a struggle of getting those really smooth washes and and it it has a little bit higher knee skills. There we go. Wow. <laughs> it has you need more skills to use a hot press paper to get the look that you want sometimes. And I originally had it planned to do cold press paper because it's just so much easier to get those really big washes down. You have to work so much faster with hot press before it just like sinks into the paper and then and then those edges become so obvious. So that combined with the fact that I was going in with no line work, it was it was really nerve wracking. But but I think that that was really a big part of why I feel so excited about this piece is because I I pushed myself in a direction that I've been I've been wanting to go as far as starting with outlines for a long time now, but I I oftentimes sink back onto my old habits because I'm running out of time or I, I think that oh maybe it'll work better if I do that when really I don't think it necessarily would. So so it was it was really empowering and exciting to be able to go into a piece that I was nervous about and I didn't have everything totally figured out so that while I was painting it, it was much more of a discovery of a process and it felt like I was figuring things out and things were getting better and and it was building up my arsenal of skills for the next piece that I was doing so or that I will eventually do. So it just it felt like I was pushing past past the known into an area that that even if it meant struggling a little bit and adapting it was exciting and that is something that I've really missed in my in my artwork and I know that I love artwork that has line work I love doing line work so so I don't want it to go away at all I just want to find a way to make it more adaptive to a piece that that can become its own thing as I work on it I want to be able to explore that piece and see where it goes and see where the line art will take it and when the line work is so set in stone from the very beginning and usually it's it's one color or it's colors that just aren't quite the perfect match. It just really holds the piece back and it holds me back from really expanding into a direction that I want. So so this feels feels like the right way to go about it where I can still incorporate the line work. I can still get that sharp graphic effect that I want, but it's in a way that's much more painterly really uh there are some some drawbacks to it one thing is that I love being able to just glaze on top of things to really affect the overall color of it and and the way that things blend and mesh together but because I'm going in and creating line work that is with watercolors they're all to a certain degree water responsive so if I do another layer on top of say her hair if I wanted to change the overall palette of her color of hair I wouldn't be able to do that after I did the line work because it would all just get eaten away and then blend out and have this really hazed look to it so that really is just something that that is going to take some learning as far as me approaching the the pattern of creating the layers and everything it's just thinking things through and having the correct plan and the correct color comp and and knowing what I'm going into before I really get too far into it. I I did really enjoy doing the line work for this piece though. There like I said there are a lot of things that I'm learning with this with doing the line work with the watercolors. So so with like creating lighter colors, I think I think I might actually want some more pastel watercolors to potentially mix with it. Because when you're creating a wash with watercolors and you want a lighter color, you just mix more water in and then it has that paper white come through and then it becomes a lighter color. But when I'm doing the line work, then it means that the line work is less opaque, which is the nature of watercolor. So it makes sense. But but then it means that if I'm covering up like the seam of two different areas and they're kind of rough together, 
if it's really transparent in the line art, then the line art isn't really doing its job of making things sharp and clean. So I, I think I still need to kind of work through that and figure it out. I, I did find that mixing more pigment in and just choosing the, the paint colors that were naturally lighter, that that really did help for certain areas that I wanted a lighter line work. So I, ha I do have some colors like my quinacridone red. That's one that I relied on a lot for the hair and the skin for areas that I wanted to be a bit lighter. And then I have a, uh, oh, I don't remember what it's called, but I have an actually a really dark red. And that's the one that I leaned into more when I wanted it to be a really rich, dark line work. I tried to lean more into different textures with this piece too, which I had a lot of fun with. It definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone. So I, I wanted there to be the texture in that first initial wash for the background. And that one I'm pretty used to. I like using that kind of texture. And then I wanted there to be texture in the trees and the way that I went about that. The trees are actually a little bit of a a challenge as far as me planning out how to do it because I wanted it to go from the the paint, the mixed paint at the very bottom of the painting. And then as it went up, I wanted to be able to transition into going in with just the clear water placing where the tree would be and then dropping in the paint into that clear water. That way it would be all one cohesive shape rather than in some of the tests that I did where I went in with the paint and then I brushed out the trunk and then some of the branches on it, certain areas would dry and then it would just create this modeled kind of a look to it where you'd see lines and and breaks in the tree and I wanted it to all be one tree so that was something that I had to plan out a little bit better and I decided to and this is gonna seem really silly maybe but I was really nervous to do the the fur texture for the unicorn since that kind of texture just going in with the brush and letting things just flow and me just trusting myself with the brush to go in like that I, I was not very confident with that, but but I enjoyed it. I think that it turned out all right. And I definitely think that it'll push me into trying that kind of loose textural thing in the future where I could just believe that I can do it and then maybe I can actually do it. But overall, I just feel really good about this piece. I feel like it's one that, that kind of woke me up from being in this autopilot where I I want to be an artist, I need to make art, but I, I don't always feel invested in the piece or put in the time to be invested in a piece. And this one, I think that I, I finally connected with it. I felt excited about what I was doing in it. I felt challenged by it. And most importantly, I think it, it made me excited about doing the next piece and the piece after that because there were so many things that I explored in this piece that that I want to figure out and I want to see where I can push it and where I could take it. And and I'm not in this little box that I had put myself in for a really long time. And, and that feels really good. It feels amazing as an artist to be able to be at a point where I, I can see a little bit farther on the horizon. I can see more of what I want to do and I can feel excited about reaching that point. And I do have this available in prints as well as the original painting at my shop. There's a link at the very top of the description. I also have links to all of the things that I use to create this painting. So if you're interested in what paints or brushes or paper or anything that I use, that is all listed below. I also have a link to my Patreon. You guys who are my patrons over there are absolutely incredible. I really could not do this without you. So thank you all so much for that. And that's about it. <laughs> I'll be back next week with another art video. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys all have a wonderful Christmas or holiday season. So thank you guys and I'll, I'll see you next week.